Hi, my name is Julie and I'm an 11th grade student at a public school in suburban Philadelphia. I scored a perfect 2400 on the 2012 October SAT. I've been Dr. Pace's student since I was in elementary school and her system works. Go to her website for more information on me and countless other students she's been helping. Hi, I'm Dr. Pace. SAT sentence completions, a strategic approach. The world of mathematics is very different from the world of English. In mathematics answers are provable. One plus one is two, there's no debate. But in English, suppose your creative genius tells you A is right, and the test makers say it's B. How can they prove it? They can. They set these sentences up like mathematical equations that are provable in the court of law. The equation strategy is based on two key words. One of them is positive or negative. The other is an equal to or a shift word. Let's take a look and see how it works. She is my friend, comma, and I, and then there's a blank her. So the first thing I do is look for, is there a positive or a negative word? Yes, friend, it's positive. Now, how does that influence the word in the blank? Well, that depends on the other key word. Is there an equal to or a shift word in the sentence? And is a logical equivalent. It means equal to. That means the word in the blank must be positive. Positive equals positive. She's my friend and I like her. She's my friend and I respect her. On the street, you can say she's my friend and I hear guts, everybody understands what you mean, but they cannot do that on the test. They must follow the rules of logic, which is an equation. Now they can have, she is my friend, comma, but I, then there's a blank her. Friend positive, now but is a shift word, therefore I know I'm looking for a negative. So positive, shift word, negative. Now how does this affect your choice? Well, you're given five choices. Some of those words will be positive and some will be negative. Know you're looking for a negative, you get rid of every positive word. There will be two or three in most cases that you can get rid of, thereby increasing the chance that when you guess, you'll guess the right answer. The best you can do is know the right answer, but if you don't, you want to eliminate as many wrong answers as you possibly can. And on the SAT, if you can eliminate at least one answer, you guess. Otherwise, you don't. Now, if you have a two blank sentence, four possible patterns emerge. Positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, or negative, positive. Notice the first two are going in the same direction, the second two are going in an opposite direction. And this can help you. Once again, eliminate any answer choice that does not follow the pattern you're looking for. Be aware that in case all of the keywords are pointing at one blank, say the second blank, you can use that information and that information alone to help you eliminate some of the answers without even looking at the first blank. The second strategy is the definition strategy. Very simply, they must give you the definition. Find it. Once you find it, match it to the word it defines. They must use one of these two approaches. Using them and combinations of these two strategies will help you perform your personal best on the sentence completions on test day. Speaking of personal best, when you get your score report back, you'll get not just the score, but a range of scores. And on the SAT, each of the three subject areas has about an 80-point range. For example, if you got a 560 in math, they would show a 520 to 600 range. Now, my job as a coach or an instructor is to do two things. I need to help you shift up your performance range, for example, from a 580 to a 660. And that requires learning the essential math and English necessary on the SAT. Well, I have a second job, and that's how you perform at the upper end of your range. There's an 80-point spread on three subjects. That's a lot of points. And what does that have to do with? That goes well beyond knowledge of math and English. That depends on how you feel that day physically. What's your emotional disposition? Are you nervous? Are you stressed out? Are you bored to tears? Do you lack confidence? Are you distracted? All of those factors will have an effect on your performance on test day. I've been helping thousands of kids in the Philadelphia area. I'd like to help you. If you think I can, contact me. I'd like you to go on my website, drpaceseminars.com. Take a look at the testimonies that my students give. Look at their point increases. See what their parents have to say, and sometimes their teachers and their principals and their presidents. If you live in Philadelphia, come to Philly and take a class with me. If not, think about the SAT Essentials Kit, which contains my flashcards, math and vocab and grammar and essay, all the information that you need to know based on my 30 years of experience with this test plus the SAT retreat, which teaches kids effective techniques to deal with all those non-academic factors that get in the way of personal best performance. I hope I can help. If you feel I can, contact me. 
thank you so much for listening. That's a wrap, James, because now I have to teach these kids how to use those strategies for the real question.